is involved, but from just a football standpoint, how important are those things? Yeah. So, yeah, they're very important. Obviously, they're magnified when you have coaching turnover and changes uh, for the position coaches to build relationships with their players and get a feel for how to coach them and how to work with them on the field. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, every year we make adjustments to the defense, we make adjustments to the special teams. And then this year, obviously, you know, getting with uh, with Coach Sharaka and, and sitting in a room for a month and and taking the best things they did at Minnesota and the best things we did at Penn State and merging them, um, you know, there's a lot of work to be done. So, you know, we've uh, we've been able to do a lot of this stuff remotely, um, but obviously face-to-face -face time is important. And then being on the field, it's one thing to be able to, you know, know the playbook and it's one thing to, you know, have discussions, but you learn so much. Um, you know, by going against your defense every single day in practice and vice versa. So, um, you know, it's challenging. There's no doubt about it. You know, there's a lot of different proposals being thrown out there, whether it's a longer camp, um, you know, whether it's extra hours during the summer that we're able to work with them. Um, there's a lot of proposals right there, you know, but, but obviously right now it's hard to even tell because we don't know uh, how long we're going to be in this scenario. So, uh, it's challenging, you know, but we've we've been having Zoom meetings, uh, which I think have been have been good by position, and um, you know it's a way to connect with our guys, you know. So you know I want to make sure that I've, I've been adamant. I say this all the time, even in even when we're not in situations like this, that we better be spending time talking about things other than football. Um, and now that's that's obviously even more important. So I want to make sure even when we're having our Zoom meetings to go over spring installations and things like that, we should be spending some time uh, making sure these guys are all right, their families are all right, and, and, and have an awareness of what's going on in their lives. As you guys know, uh, my youngest daughter has sickle cell, uh, which is an autoimmune disease. She's got the full-fledged uh, disease. Um, so, you know, it, it hits home uh, for us, uh, as I know it does for a lot of families. Um, so, you know, we're, we're very aware of that and trying to be sensitive. Tyler Donahue, 24-7. Hey, James. Hope you and the family are hanging in there. Um, you too, Tyler. Appreciate that. You talked a lot about trying to cultivate the most a competitive environment in college football. How does that sustain when everybody's scattered across the country? And what can guys do right now to put themselves in a good spot for position battles before they get back to get campus? Well, I think the biggest thing, the, the way I look at it is, you know, we, we try to compete in everything we do. And right now we're in a challenging situation. And the reality is the most successful people and the most successful organizations and the most successful teams are going to handle this challenge the best and come out of it the best. Are we going to be where we were before? No, but nobody else is as well. So how are we handling this situation? Um, the the self-determination and drive to make sure we're doing everything we're supposed to do academically. Um, same thing, whether it's body weight workouts on your own. Um, you know, again, we're still competing with all the other top programs in the country and the best programs and the best individuals are going to handle, you know, this adversity uh, the best. And I would even, I would even, you know, like to try to even flip it in some ways and say, if handled the right way, we have an opportunity to learn from this, to grow from this. Uh, to learn some things about ourselves individually, to learn some things about ourselves as program. Um, again, embracing the technology, all these different things that we have to do um, and, and to hopefully come out of this thing stronger and use this as an opportunity to learn and grow as a program. Mike Gross, Lancaster Newspapers. Hey James, how are you? Good, Mike, how are you, buddy? I'm great, I'm great. Thanks for doing this. Um, Wait, with the new offensive coordinator, are you having to install anything that that the guys have literally never heard of before or seen before? And in that sense, is that any sort of a particular challenge to not have spring ball with Kirk? Yeah, so yeah, the interesting thing is we could give our playbook right now to Minnesota and it does not look like Minnesota's playbook. And there's things that don't look like Penn State's playbook because really 
we have kind of merged it all. You know, so there's there's probably only one new scheme that we haven't done before. There's some tweaks to things that we have done, but there's probably only one um, specific scheme that we're going to be running that's going to be a major part of our offense that we haven't run in the past. But there's also things that we're running that that Kirk didn't run at Minnesota based on the blend. So it's it's let's not call something the way we've always called it because that's how you always called it at Minnesota. That's how we always called it at Penn State. Let's do what's the best thing for the system. Because I think that's an important thing that I learned is all these things are great ideas, but you have to have a system and it has to fit together and they have to be complementary pieces, if that makes sense. Um, you know, I remember being an offensive coordinator and you'd go out and hire different coaches and they'd all come in with great ideas, but those ideas have got to fit the scheme and they got to be complementary pieces. So that's, that's what we're doing. So yeah, it's, it's, there's new stuff for our players. But there's also new stuff for Kurt. Um, so we're kind of all working through it together to put together the best offense we can for Penn State. It's not Minnesota. It's not Penn State. It's, it's a merge like we've talked about in the past. Peter Terpstra, WTAJ. Hi, Ken. How are you? Well, I think probably early on, um, specifically young people, probably a lot of people weren't taking this serious enough. Um, you know, um, I'm not a politician, but there's part of me that would just love to lock the whole country down, um, all of it, because I think the sooner we do that, the quicker we, we can come out of this thing. Um, but I think, I think for, uh, for all of us, uh, whether it's young people or whether it's uh, middle-aged or whether it's, you know, um, the elderly, you know, this is this has kind of been, a, I think, a wake up call for all of us of, of how fragile it all is and how careful we have to be. And and, um, you know, again, I think the positives that can come out of this thing is is, you know, um, you know people being forced outside of their comfort zone and having to operate in a different way that they're used to operating. I'm not a sit in front of the computer for nine hours a day, but that's basically what I've been doing, um, whether it's been. You know, we, we typically have a conference call every single day with the AD. I have an, a separate conference call with my uh, sports supervisor and, and Scott Sidwell. We'll have team meetings. Uh, you know, we're obviously FaceTime and recruits. Um, we're, you know, on the, the, the tablets uh, going through the installs and the video. Um, so I'm not typically a sit in front of the computer for nine hours straight type of guy, but, but that's how it's been. So I, I think it's just... Like I mentioned before, I think it's forcing a lot of people out of their normal normal comfort zone. And again, if it's approached the right way, then I think that we can learn from this and we can grow from this. One of the quotes that we used in our first team meeting with our players that I love, it's an Andy Grove quote. And the quote says, bad companies are destroyed by crisis. Good companies survive them. Great companies are improved by them. And obviously we want to be in that category. So um, it's at a fine line. You know, we want, to be, we want to be sensitive to what's going on in our country, but we also have a responsibility to make sure we're doing everything we possibly can to make sure our guys are, are still getting a great education, uh, even though that may be online, uh, that they're still taking care of their bodies uh, because we put so much hard work in that they don't want to lose that. And then also, obviously, you know, when it comes to football specific um, you know, activities and things like that, uh, we, we got to come out of this and, and be able to hit the ground running. Josh Moyer, Center Daily Times. Hey, James. Uh, overall, I, I just wanted to ask, hey, Josh. How, how are you doing? Good. How are you, man? I'm pretty good, thanks. Uh, I just wanted to ask you how your staff members and, and players, you know, how, how they've been so far through this. And, and has anyone there, you know, tested positive for, for the coronavirus? Yeah, Josh, as you could imagine, um, you know, I'm not going to answer, you know, questions when it comes to, you know, people's specific health. I, I don't even know if that's, I don't even know if that's legal to do that. Um, but, um, you know, yeah, it's, it's all over the map when you got as many different people that we do in our organization 
and as many different backgrounds. Uh, this is this is challenging. This is challenging from a health perspective. Uh, this is challenging from a financial perspective. Uh, people are being you know hit from you know so many different angles and, and perspective. We had players that have gone home, um, you know, and their and their families have uh, you know taken their bedrooms and turned them into different things, and they're sleeping on couches. They're just there's so many different dynamics that it, that have gone gone into this, and and we want to be sensitive to all of them. Um, you know, so yeah, it's, it's, it's all over the map. We got some guys that are in state college on campus. We got some guys that are in state college in their own, um, apartments. Uh, the majority, the great majority of our team is at home, uh, with families. Um, but, but again, um, you know, some guys have challenging situations there as well. So, uh, we're trying to be aware of all these different situations that we can and be sensitive to them and be as supportive as we possibly can within the NCAA rules. Greg Pickle, Penn Live. Hey, James, how you doing? Good, Greg. How are you, buddy? I'm well, thanks. Hey, I'm just curious about from a recruiting perspective, has it changed much for you guys since you can still do a lot of what you just did in February with the dead period? And are you looking into doing anything potentially with virtual junior days or things like that? Yeah, it's challenging. I think this has been more challenging for the Northeast schools than it is for, for most of the other schools in the country because at it, you know, for, for me, one of the big parts about the NCAA is to, to try to level the playing field as much as you possibly can. Uh, some schools have, have gotten done spring ball. Some people have gotten done half of spring ball. They've had junior days. Uh, for us, the way the calendar fell, you know, one of the things that was really challenging is um, our players uh, were home on spring break when this hit. So I wasn't even able to have a team meeting. A lot of our players didn't have their books with them. They weren't able to come back to campus. Uh, it's, it's challenging. We, we weren't able to get recruits on campus like we normally are. Spring ball is a huge recruiting time for us for them to come up, watch practice, interact with the coaches, all those types of things. Um, so I think the Northeast schools, that spring ball is a little bit later um, you know, it's, it's more challenging. You know, I think it's one of the reasons why I think the Big Ten was so aggressive in the new recruiting rules that went into place last year with, uh, with doing official visits in the spring and things like that, that we could get guys on campus, um, you know, when, when the weather was attractive and things like that. So um, it's a challenge. There's no doubt about it. We, again, embracing the technology is the best thing we can do. Uh, FaceTimes are a big part of that. Virtual tours is something that that we're going to have to do. Um, I, I typically uh, we haven't done a whole lot of that. A lot of people have that built on their website. We we haven't done that typically in the past um, because you know to be honest with you, you know um, I think we had a great building, and I don't necessarily want everybody to know what we have in our buildings. I know that's what we do. We steal ideas from from other people that have you know put things in their building and things like that. So. Um, now, now, you know, obviously we're in a different scenario and, and we have to embrace that and we're going to have to use it. So, um, you know, but I think FaceTimes is probably as big as anything uh, with the recruits right now and, and finding ways to interact with them and, and they see your face. I actually think there's a part of this, uh, even this, even this, um, you know, this conference that we're having right now, this conference call with everybody, um, even seeing your guys' faces, it kind of gets us back into our normal routine. I think it's the same thing with our players. It's one thing to call a player. It's another thing to be able to get on Whoop or FaceTime and be able to interact and smile and see, and see each other. So um, you know, I think there's value in all these things, and we're just trying to embrace them as much as we possibly can um, to close ground on, on some of the schools that, that have uh, you know, got further into spring ball and further into junior days and things like that. Audrey Snyder, The Athletic. Hey, James, how you doing? Good, Audrey, how are you? Good, just waiting for the new season of Ozark to drop. Yeah, I, I, I love Ozark. Yeah. <laughs> when is that coming back on? Friday. Friday, good. You know, we've been, me and Fumi have been watching late at night. We've been watching Mindhunter. Have you ever watched that show? No, but I was, I was sucked into Tiger King, and that's a wild ride. Yeah, I haven't checked that one out, but we are, like, I, like it's funny, like, even the Netflix thing that we put out, like, I, to be honest, I haven't watched any of this stuff. I did watch Ozark, um, so it was a big. It was more of my wife's list than it was mine. But uh, but yeah, I, I like Ozark. Yeah. No. Likewise. Um, 
I'm but just Mine Hunter. Check out Mine Hunter. Mine Hunter. I'll. I think I'll have enough time ben, to do ben, it. Ben Jones is giving us a thumbs up. <laughs> um, James, I'm just wondering though, along with recruiting, um, at this point, do you think that you know a December signing period would even be realistic? Have Have there been conversations about maybe doing away with that this year, given everything that's going on? Yeah, there's there's so many different scenarios out there, and so many different proposals based on conferences, um, you know, based on the NCAA, there's so many different proposals out there. I think it's hard to, to say anything right now when we don't know when this is going to end. Um, but I think all options are on the table right now. Um, you know, what I, what I wanna make sure that we do is before we just throw something out there and say, say something, that we've had enough discussion and dialogue with all the conferences, the commissioners, um, and I hope I hope even you know even specific campuses and coaches and things like that because it, it's just not that simple. Even like the discussion that we've had in extending guys' eligibility and giving people another year of eligibility, we threw that out there before we really talked it all through. People have limits on their roster sizes. How is that going to be affected? People have already signed recruiting classes. If you do this, this is your number of recruits. There's there's a lot of factors um, that go into this. I plenty. So I just think the the point you brought up is a good one, but we just got to make sure that all these things are vetted and really well thought through, uh, because there's always unforeseen consequences to these decisions. Heather Dinich, ESPN.com. Uh, I've heard a lot of coaches talk about how you guys are, are sending players workouts and things like that, but can you give me some... Anybody. Oh. Heather, did we lose you? I got you back now, Chris. Okay. Heather, did we lose you? Hold on one second. Heather, try again. Can you hear me, James? I can. Sorry about that, Heather. That's okay. Um, so a lot of coaches have been talking about how they're sending players workouts, body strength, et cetera. Can you give me some specifics as to how you get creative with, say, an offensive lineman who doesn't have the equipment he would have on the field or a receiver or a quarterback who doesn't have the space maybe in an apartment to try and make long throws? What are some other things that you guys are asking them to do besides push-ups, sit-ups, et cetera? Well, I think the first thing is the reality is you can get a lot of work done uh, with body weight workouts. Um, you, you really can. So trying to embrace that as much as we can, trying to focus on the things that we can control and not the things that we can't, um, and making sure our guys embrace them as much as possible. And then, and then what we've tried to do is, is really go through our strength staff, reached out to every single one of our players to find out what do they have. So it's not like we could just send a workout um, to, the, to, the, to the whole team. It was based on individuals. You know, they may have a, they may have a kettlebell or something like that in their house. Uh, what do they have? And then be able to try to build the workout around that for them. Um, some guys live in an area where they have the ability to get out and, and run on a, a field or, or something like that. Uh, again, I think we have to be careful of how much we're leaving the house, uh, but we've tried to try to look at all those things. Um, in terms of quarterbacks and receivers and throwing the ball and things like that, I don't, I don't really see where that fits uh, with where we are as a program. Um, and where we are as a country with this virus right now, um, I think that needs to take the back seat, um, you know, for the time being. I mean, obviously, some people have more space in their home or more space in their basement or more space in their backyard that they're still able to do some things. Um, I know some of our players, I saw some of our offensive linemen working on pass sets in the front lawn and things like that. So there's, there's some, some of that. And then what we've also tried to do is look at like a backpack workout. So what I mean by that is uh, whether it's taking a duffel bag or whether it's taking a backpack and loading that up with sand or loading that up with rocks and being able to do basically a body weight workout um, with whatever that backpack or that, um, that um, you know, bag is able to hold. 
Um, and then, and then once we find out what that is, and if they have the ability to do that, then we can adjust the workout for that as well. So, you know, it's, it's challenging. Um, but, but, you know, I think, I think your point is a good one. Um, it's, it's, it's very, very difficult based on, on what people have at home and, um, and what position they play. Bob Flounders, Penn Live.